certainly what we call acupuncture meridians, like this has to do with hypoglycemia, this has to do with the mammary glands, this has to do with the testes and the bladder. Um, if you're constipated up here, this would relate to adrenal function, right. which is the backbone to our immune system. This is the stomach and the pyloric valve area. So if you get a lot of like um, adjua or reflux or problems with you know burping, burping gas up. and bloating, you're constipated up here. People who have reoccurring bronchial bronchitis and asthma would be constipated over here then, right? In their transverse area. Wow, this have is the transverse. That's right by the belly button then, correct? Um, yeah, the belly button would be like right here. Right about here. And people who have problems with heart disease, gallbladder, and liver would be constipated over here in the hepatic flexure. So that's a big colon. I read somewhere at one point that if you were to take the entire intestinal tract in our body, and, or digestive tract, and open it up and flatten it out, the lumen, the lining area, mm -hmm. would cover a tennis court, if, if not more. That's yeah. tremendous. It is. So, and these are live cells. They need nourishment. Right. We think of this as a refuse area, not to be paid attention to. Let it go, let it flow, you know, not to worry <laughs> about it. But it's important to keep it moving. So six inches of stool is not enough, folks. Nope. We have to move our bowels. And it's important that we get our bowel movement up to at least 18 inches a day. And of stool, that's what you should evacuate. And normally, if you're not evacuating that much, it's because you're not A, drink, eating enough food, drinking enough water, or eating, eating enough, enough the right, right foods. Right. That's really amazing. Well, there's a good goal for 1998 for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't get it moving, call Christina. She'll help you. Um, okay. I just wanted to mention one more thing about the um, size of the bowel movements. Not only should they be, you know, anywhere from two to three feet long, but also three inches in diameter. So, or three fingers. Three in fingers diameter. in diameter. Yes. That's a pretty wide stool. Yes. Huh. That's a healthy stool. So if somebody's only moving, um, their stool's only a finger in diameter. They have a spasm somewhere. They have a spasm? Right. Really? Yep. W you mean it's like tightening it and squeezing right, it down? Right, like in these pictures here. It's very We're going to show the sickly colon over here, Bill, if you can do that in a minute. Um, but for the most part, the spasm would be in one a of these areas. Of some sort, yes. So it's thinned out. Right. And that causes the stool to thin down a little bit. Right. Well, that's interesting. So how many people out there move at least three fingers in diameter every day? <laughs> Raise your hands. I want to know. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at this in a minute here. Um, and is the odor important in the color of the stool? Absolutely. What should the color of a person's stool be? It should be a medium, medium light brown, not real dark, not real pale. Okay. Um, and definitely just a mild odor, not not anything that makes you run screaming through from the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's good to know. Yes. All right. Um, tell me this: What types of problems will people experience when their colon is really, really toxic? Oh, gamut of things: um, fatigue, indigestion, gas, bloating, uh, acne, asthma, arthritis. Mm. Um, even moodiness, um, headaches. Really? Yeah. So those can all be signs of a really toxic body. Absolutely. Huh. Bad breath, body odor. Well, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. It starts leaching through your skin. Don't we have like a huge amount of our lymph nodes surrounded or located around our colon too? Yes. So, I mean, something like 60%, I think, are around our, our colon packed in here. So if we've got a toxic colon, we know we have toxic lymph nodes. Right which help to carry and portage all that blood into the body. So um, tell me this. Tell me in detail with your chart how the colonic process works. So we need to take a look at the colon chart again. Okay. Um, well, these are the sickly twisted colons that we looked at earlier, right? Right. Okay. So these are people <coughs> who have what kind of problems here? We'll look at this first. Well, I mean, they're... A, a couple of these cannot be treated by colonics, um, just for the sense that in this area here, these are connected by um, connective tissue, mm -hmm. and the way that those fall, like this picture here that should be placed right there, wow. um, is through surgery, mm. um, just reattaching the connective area. And that's because a woman, it happens mostly to women, <clears throat> because uh, of some sort of trauma or fall, mm. aerobics instructors, runners and such. Um, but these all twisted and contorted col um, colons are from constipation, not enough fiber, not enough water, 
um, may even be some sort, sort of uh, mineral deficiency as well. These are not healthy colons. Look at these diverticuli no. and the balloon this guy has over here. Yep. So these are people who really have a myriad of ailments going on, yes. correct? That's tough. And if you had a fallen colon such as this picture, you would know it because it'd be laying on other organs of the body. So you probably have like a leaky bladder, can't you have incontinence, can't hold your urine really well. And you know, women having their reproductive organs in that area, they'd have problems with mm. that as well. Interesting. So okay. So talk to us again, if you would, about the colon. About here, let's get this picture over here. Okay. Um, tell us how colonic therapy works. What do you actually do? Well, we have a, a, a speculum that we insert into the anus, and it goes in about anywhere from an inch to two inches. Okay. And um, once it's inserted, we have the client laying on a table on their left side. Um, and we start the water flow. And we have them stay on their, on their left side so that this area gets saturated because as we discussed earlier, this is where majority of people have their problems. This is where the hard impacted fecal matter is. And um, mm -hmm. we want to clear that out first before we put them on their back and have the water more evenly dispersed. I see. And then, of course, a big portion of the clinic is abdominal massage. It's very important to, um, the massage is, we do that for two reasons, not only to help relax the muscle and allow it to release, but also to help move out all of the encrusted fecal matter. Mm. So what you end up with, if you have a really like toxic colon, is years of crusted fecal matter that kind of pockets itself in these little pockets exactly. here. Exactly. And um, and it takes, you know, it, one colonic can you can clean out the whole colon in that, um, but not necessarily the layers, especially mm -hmm. if you're creating lots of mucus. Um, mucus acts as a cement and it dries on the walls of the colon. So. Mm. Um, and what know, causes mucus in the colon? to be formed. High allergy foods, sugar, dairy, the same, same sort of things. Fermenting products. Exactly. High sugar issues. Okay. Exactly. And um, how long does a colonic take? Anywhere, the actual process is anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, um, the colonic itself. But we spend anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour with the client um, with the massaging process. And we also give them time um, on their own after the the clonic is over to um, alleviate any release. extra, re yes, release, exactly, okay. of the fecal matter in the water. Is it painful? It should not be. Um, if anyone ever gets a colonic from anywhere and experiences pain, never go back. You're going to the wrong place. Okay. Um, sometimes there is pain because of gas and bloating and... Or cramping. Cramping because yeah. of the water, but the actual colonic itself is not should painful. not be painful. Mm -mm. Okay. No, and if there is, then you know we might need to look into you know something else. You might have uh, fissure or um, hemorrhoids. Can you know. anyone receive a colonic and benefit from this? Pretty much ev everyone. Um, there are age and weight limit um, concerns. Concerns. You don't want to treat a, a small child, a child below the age of. I want to say six years old, under 40 pounds. Okay. Um, and older people, the elderly, you have to be, you, they can get colonics. Um, you just have to not give them as much water and not use as be much. Be a little more gentle. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the other concern are, are pregnant women. Why? If they've never had a colonic before, um, or if they have, they need to go to their therapist that they use on a regular basis. Mm. Because with colonics, your body, if you've never had one before, and you're releasing and contracting you're all of down. this, you're bearing down mm -hmm. so that you don't want to cause any harm to the fetus. So get your bowels moving before you become pregnant. Well, certainly you <laughs> want to become, you know, clean out and detoxify before you bring another life in this world. So colonic therapy can also assist with <coughs> people who have chronic diarrhea and constipation Both. because it gets rid of the toxins and it gets rid of the irritants along the mucosal membrane wall. Right. And when you do colonic therapy, then it also helps to reestablish a slightly acidic pH balance, right? Right. And some people become too alkaline, from what I understand, which causes fermentation. more parasites and more bacteria to grow in there. Yeah, it becomes more of a friendly host for those little guys. Ooh, we don't want to be a host to those guys. So what else can someone do out there to change their pH balance? Um, well, you want to um, increase the hydrogen, the 
hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid in, their, in their stomach. And um, you need to uh, increase your lactobacillus and acidophilus, which is the good bacteria. Where do you get lactobacillus acidophilus? Well, you should be creating it on your own. It's made from what? Fiber. And um, water. Fruits yeah. and vegetables and water, like we discussed earlier. Cool. However, majority of, of people aren't creating enough of the lactobacillus. How do you know? You're constipated? <laughs> <laughs> you have very odiferous stools. Yes. Really? I mean, the, the, you can never do too much of that stuff. That okay. stuff is great. Um, it's almost as important as water. You me. can give it to babies, as I understand, correct? It's that gentle. That's Just make great. sure that you get the dairy free. Dairy free. So no milk sugar. Right. Okay, so you want to change your pH a little bit, make it a little more slightly acidic, and colonic therapy will do that, and then you can re-inoculate on your own exactly. with lactobacillus acidophilus. That's and cool. hopefully you'll start creating more of your own as well. Okay. Um, I've read lately that parasites are on the rise. Is this true? Very much so. Parasitic activity? Doctors, when I know when my clients go to their doctor, and they're like, ah, oh, no one's had parasites in this country for years, and they come back carrying their parasite in a jar. They're shocked, but I mean, I know I see it in my practice. But why? Why is that? Because the pH level is imbalanced. Really? Um, it creates a, a friendly, friendly environment for the parasites when your pH is off. So we pick parasites up on our foods, it goes into the stomach, and it should be killed off, right, by right. the well, hydrochloric acid? Uh, by the hydrochloric acid, and also, um, it's just a constant catch-22. As long as you're moving, basically the parasites will just pass through your stool. But if you're constipated, that allows them to, to breed. Will breed, breed. And, and nest and find other places to rest. That's disgusting. Yes. So and they're really hard to get rid of. They're hard to get rid of. So we can get them from where? Parasites are found in what foods? Everything. Um, most people will just assume that it's just because of meat. Meat eaters get mm -hmm. it, but you can get it on a on anything and everything. Fruits and vegetables. Just because of mishandling, or yeah, it's even in our water. I mean, you can get them from water. <sighs> So you have to make sure you have the hydrochloric acid and the good bacteria going. Exactly, and that you're moving. And when you have the, the good bacteria and the hydrochloric acid, you will be moving. And most people don't have that hydrochloric acid because they're drinking too much coffee or taking all these medications and so on and so forth. And that mm -hmm. destroys and the digestive enzymes as well. Wow. So it's really sad. It is sad. And we're, we're, that's why it's so important colon health. That's why we're here, to, to teach people and have them be their own healers. To take care of their own bodies. Exactly. Well, that's a wonderful empowerment. That's a wonderful gift to bring to people. Absolutely. So tell me this. Um, I know that you do seminars, nutrition consultants do seminars, so people should just call the number up on the screen right. and ask what seminars are coming up because we do seminars on colon health as well. And I think we have a couple coming up in the fall. And um, don't forget to tune in and watch our show here and know that we wish you all the very best of health. And until we see you next week, take good care of your health. And Christina, thank you again for joining us. This is thank fascinating. You. It's important that we take care of our colons. And if you have questions, concerns, or you'd like more information on colonic therapy, call Colon Care okay. Inc., which is in the phone book. Um, you can certainly call Nutrition Consultants and I'll refer you their number. So. Again, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. You were much. very informative. We appreciate it. That was wonderful.